moving on to linear measure here. Uh, yesterday we dealt with lines. Okay, now we're going to get into line segments. The biggest difference between a line and a line segment, if you remember a line, okay, it went through any two points, like just like that, right? If that was A, B, we named that line with arrows at the end, right? Because it goes on forever in both directions. A line segment now is different. A segment with two endpoints. It's got two endpoints. Okay. Um, so now if I use A and B again, they end. They don't go on forever. So when we name this, we just straight up say, well, let me, I better get some letters in there, A, B. We say A, B with a line over top, no arrows now, right? Because it doesn't extend indefinitely. So here I can tell that this is a line segment. Here I can tell that this is a line, just by the symbol used above uh, my letters there. Okay, you're gonna get a couple problems that are, they're gonna put some shape next to a ruler and it's gonna just ask what the measurement is. This is a review from elementary stuff. Just remember that uh, looking at my ruler, this top part is centimeters and this bottom part is inches, right? We should all know that by now. Well, I didn't write that very well. Inches, okay. Uh, centimeters up top, inches on the other side, right? Inches a little bit bigger. There's 2.54 centimeters in every inch. Um, so yeah, so that's just saying they have an object starting at zero here. Okay, and it extends to like right there. Um, you just look, it's going two point, you know, these are in tenths, so two point, what, seven-ish? So you're gonna say 2.7 centimeters. Okay, that's all you gotta do. Pretty simple. Same thing if it's looking at inches, right? Let's say it draws it from the zero all the way to about right there. Okay, you just gotta think, what are these hashes broken into? Um, well, I got my the inches, right? Then the half inches are right in the middle, then the fourth inches are in between there, and then the eighth inches are between there, um, and then the sixteenth inches are the really small ones. So this is really, well, the half is like eight sixteenths right here, right? That's like eight sixteenths for the half, the one half is eight sixteenths. Um, and so it's basically one little dash after that, so nine sixteenths. So that's really one and nine sixteenths inches, one nine sixteenths inches. Um, so yeah, just kind of a quick review. You should all be able to rock through that pretty quickly. Um, if you need help or need a refresher on the ruler, that's fine. Uh, I'll help you out. Okay, we're going to be given some different information about our line segments, and we're just going to either solve for variables or, or evaluate some stuff to find distances. Um, Pretty straightforward, okay? So if you're here, find x, z. Finding the distance of that segment. Assume that the figure is not drawn to scale. All right, it's not drawn to scale. But uh, find an x, z, which is the whole thing. So I'm just adding these two. So four and five eighths plus two and one half. Uh, if I look here, if I don't have a calculator to type this into, or you're not sure how to use fractions on a calculator, you're just gonna have to get a common denominator. Um, so I'm gonna have to get this one half into over eighths. Um, so basically I want this one into eight, so times it by four, which means I got to times that one by four. So it's really two and four eighths. And we add our whole numbers, four plus two gives me six. Um, and five eighths plus four eighths is nine eighths. That looks sloppy, then simplify that. Uh, well, eight over eight is really a whole number. Okay, so I can pull a whole number out of there and make that seven, and we're left with one left over seven and one eighths. Okay, this is stuff that you should already know. And guess what? I already forgot something, didn't I? Get yourself a label anytime you're working with distances. So seven and one eighths inch. Okay, don't forget that stuff. It's easy points. Next one, we have a, uh, some terminology betweenness of points. Okay, so for any two real numbers a and b, there is a real number n that is between a and b. So basically, it's saying between any two points, uh, there's always a point in between there. Or between any two numbers, there's always a number in between there. Uh, so, for example, I have P and R, okay? Um, so, down here, point M is between P and R, if and only if, that's what my little if thing is here, that means if and only if, point M is between P and R, if and only if, P, M, and R are, what do you think? They'd have to all be on the same what? Line, wouldn't they? So, they'd have to be collinear. Our term that we learned the other day, collinear. Okay? And that would make PM plus MR equal to PR. Okay, just kind of like our last example there that we did. Let's take a look at some examples. Find LM. So I'm just looking for this segment. Well, I know the whole thing is four, 
The other part of it is 2.6, so we just subtract the two. Um, nothing to that. Well, 4 minus 2.6. You don't have to think too hard about this. Uh, get down to 4 to, four to 3 centimeters would be 1. Another 0.4 down gets us to 2.6, so 1.4 centimeters, right? 1.4 centimeters. Oh, yeah, this is where we start getting some algebra, okay? And they might not always give you a drawing. This is the stuff I kind of like. Uh, it says find the value of x and st if t is between s and u. So you just got to read kind of carefully here. Okay. Find the value of x and st if t is between s and u. And it gives us some information. It says st is 7x in distance, su is 45, and tu is 5x minus 3. And if you notice, um, when I state a line segment, I put the line above it, right? If I'm going to state its distance, we get rid of the symbol above. You don't need the symbol above it when, you, when you're showing measure. Okay? That's why we didn't put them up there. Well, just by looking, it's kind of tough, kind of tough to read through it. It might help to draw a picture. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a picture with this. I'm going to draw myself a line. I'm going to put three points on it and figure out where these points are at. It doesn't have to be the scale, okay? Because I know that T is between S and U. So I know that S and U are on the ends. And I know that T is in the middle. That always helps me to draw it out sometimes. So now I can see, okay, S, T is 7X. I'm going to go ahead and put 7X there. And I know SU is 45. Well, that's the big thing, isn't it? SU. So that's all the way from here to here. Okay? And TU is 5X minus 3. So that's the other part of this here. Well, it might be a good idea to set yourself up an equation here. Because if I, back to my, um, last definition I had, uh, I know that 7x, right, 7x plus 5x minus 3 equals the whole thing put together. So I can say 7x plus 5x minus 3 equals 45. Well, what do you know? We got one variable. We can solve this bad boy. Okay. Simplify the left side of the equal sign. Combine our x terms. So 7x plus 5x gives me 12x. And now we go through um, our inverse operations. So to solve for x, we do the inverse of subtracting 3, which is adding 3. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. Getting into our algebra again here. Oh, forgot my x. Okay, and 12 times x. So the inverse of multiplying by 12 is dividing by 12. And we are left with x equals, well, 48 divided by 12 gives me 4. Uh, do I need anything else here? Okay, I figured out what x is. Always go back and reread your directions. Always, always, always. I can't stress that enough. Uh, we do this all the time in math. It tells you to find the value of x and st. Okay, so you better find that. Well, st equals what? 7x. I know what x is. x is 4. So st is going to equal 7 times 4, what we found x to be. So st is 28. I better check to see if I need labels. I uh, don't need any labels. So there's my two answers. ST is 28, X equals 4. So reread directions. Always, 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 okay? Uh, don't forget to do that. That's important. And lastly, uh, another new term to you, congruent, okay? Anytime you see the word congruent, the symbol that goes with it is an equal sign with my little squiggly on top of it. That says they're congruent, okay? So segments that have the same measure. Uh, basically, any segment or anything that's the same is also known as congruent. So, for example, here, um, my segment AB is congruent to segment XY, okay? And I need the symbol above it to show that it's a line segment. If I was going to show measure, remember, I could just say AB equals 1.7, okay? Um, so, this statement right here says that those two lines are congruent. If I wouldn't put my symbols and would put an equal sign, this would state... Okay, this one up here we said is congruent. This one down here states that they have the same measure. Those are the difference when uh, I take away the symbol and have an equal sign instead of a congruent sign. And you're going to see that as we go through all geometry. I know this is new, um, but we got to be very exact when we make statements, okay? That's all we got. Uh, pretty straightforward today, okay? Good luck to you.